Hey folks, this is Jason with the Primal Outdoors channel. And if you've been following my channel for any amount of time, you know that in early 2023, I purchased a wood stove for the van right around the time that I had planned to put the high top on the van. But by the time I actually got the high top installed and things finished out, it was already starting to get in the spring and things were warming up and I didn't see a point in putting the wood stove in because I knew I wouldn't be using it for a few months. So jumping ahead now, we are now early 2024 and we finally got the wood stove installed. As mentioned, this stove is from Tiny Wood Stoves. Now they are not sponsoring this video. I bought the stove and all the accessories I needed to install the stove out of my own pocket. There is a sponsor of this video, but we'll get to them a little bit later. Now for those that are more interested in the whys, what's and problems that I've had with the stove, we'll get to that at the end of the video. For everyone else that's just interested in the install, we'll jump right in. So a quick backstory, when I first got the stove, it was my intention to put the stove up on the counter with the flue exiting up through the high top. But there were three reasons why I chose not to do that. First, I didn't wanna put a permanent hole into the high top. Second, I knew with the stove being sitting mid-level that down here along the floor, I'd be getting a cold pocket and third, I didn't want to take up the space on the counter because I like using that for cooking. So that ultimately led me to decide to put the stove here in the passenger seat area. The stove's actually going to only be in the van during the coldest parts of winter. During the summer and the shoulder seasons, I'll have my passenger seat back in here like normal, and I'll use my Propex heater for any heating needs I have during those times. And lastly, I'm not a professional fabricator. I do have a small shop that I like to do small projects for myself. And when it came to putting the stove in, I had a loose idea of how I wanted it to go, but you're gonna see as I go along that things changed often. So with that little bit of history and backstory out of the way, let's dive into this installation. First thing I had to do was take the passenger seat out. Out. There's only four bolts holding the passenger seat and I eventually knew that I wanted the stove to sit on a platform and I wanted that platform to bolt to the same poles that the passenger seats bolted into. So after a little bit of measuring, I figured out what size platform I was going to need to fit the stove. Now my original plan was to keep my little homemade center console in place that I typically have in here. But you'll see later in the line, I decided to delete that Why the stove is in the van. To cut the 3 16 steel plate, I used a hand plasma torch. Now I haven't got a lot of experience using a hand plasma torch. I did all right, but there was some bobbling, but for the most part, the edges came out okay. Now for drilling the holes that I was gonna need to mount the base plate down, I used the Vivor Mag Drill. Now this is a product that Vivor did send to me and it was by my request. They had sent me some products in the past. I knew that a mag drill would be super handy for working on this project. The mag drill has 10 speeds, forward and reverse, it's adjustable height, but it magnetizes to the metal, locking it in place, allowing you to drill really nice straight holes, which was perfect for doing this particular project. The package I got from Vivor came with some bits. It also comes with the ability to put a standard chuck. I used a standard chuck because the size holes I needed, the bits they sent me were too big, but that was nice because I had the standard chuck and I could put in whatever I needed to. But it worked really well, drilled the holes, and they came out nice and straight. I was very happy with how that worked out. And you'll see that I use it several more times throughout this project. So I want to give a big thank you to Vivor for sending me out the mag drill. If you guys are interested in checking it out, I have a link down in my description. So I decided I wanted the base plate to sit a little bit off the floor. So I used another product from Vivor, which was the chop saw and I cut some square tubing down to some small legs and then welded them along the bottom. Now I forgot to hit record while I was welding so you just kind of see how the finished product came out. Now with the base plate kind of put together, I went ahead and set the stove and started mocking up how I needed things to go. Since this was not the original location that I planned to put the stove, I didn't have all the flue pieces that I was gonna need because my original design, the flue was just gonna go straight up. So I just got everything set, figured out what other pieces I'd need. I went to Tiny Wood Stove's website, ordered the extra flue components, and then a couple of weeks later, I got started on it again. Now, unfortunately, I didn't figure enough space coming up off of the back here and when I mocked it up again I realized the flue was gonna sit right on the window and I didn't want that but what I ended up doing is going into Fusion 360 and designing this little wood box here that you see it wasn't originally part of the plan but in the end I'm kind of glad that that mistake happened because actually I really like this wood box what I did is I designed it up and then I sent it to my plasma table now in the two weeks I was waiting for the flue parts to come, 
I had ordered a plasma table from Langmire Systems. Again, not sponsored. I ended up buying that on a Black Friday deal and that made the rest of the process a lot easier because then I could just send the parts to the plasma table and it cut them perfectly. I then used my finger brake from Swag Off-Road to bend the shape of the box. Uh, I bent it into like a C channel because I did want little one inch tabs coming around the bottom and I used those to mount down to the main base plate. I did again use my mag drill to drill in those holes and I had to drill them into the box and I also had to drill those holes also into the main base plate. Once that was done, I used the plasma table again and then I cut out the face plate and I cut out the rear plate and welded all that together. So with the wood box pretty much done, I put the wood stove back on it. I mocked up the pipe where it was gonna go through the window. It was my idea all along to set up a piece of steel that would be the shape of the window and the flue would go through that. Again, I went to Fusion 360. I took a bunch of measurements using an angle finder and a measuring tape, and then I drew it all in Fusion and then sent it to the plasma table. Again, the plasma table did a great job of cutting out the, the window piece. With the window piece cut out, I needed a way to hold it in place. So I cut another plate and then I used the Swag Off Road uh, finger brake to bend that piece so that it would mold around the door. Once I had that piece, I put both of those kind of in place outside and I just tacked it so that that way it would hold the, the angle I needed against the van. I went back inside, added a few supports and welded everything together. So after I was done with the window piece, I decided that I wanted some angle sides on the base plate. I felt like that would be a good idea in case any embers fell out that I'd have a good way of trying to catch those so they didn't end up on my main floor. Again, Fusion 360 designed what I needed for the angle plates and then cut them out on the plasma table. And then I welded those all to the main base plate and that gave me a nice like tray so that way again, it captures anything coming out of the wood stove, but it also keeps the wood that I have in the wood box from sliding all the way out when I'm driving. So moving forward, I needed to bolt the wood stove itself to the wood box. Now the legs of the wood stove have these little tabs that sit about an inch and a half up and they have bolts that go up through them and you can use those to level the stove. I wanted to use those same tabs to bolt the stove to the plate so i got bolts going up through the bottom and into those but i was afraid that since there was a gap between the top of the wood box and where those tabs were that when i'm driving around that the stove could shift a little bit so again i went into fusion 360 and i cut some little tabs some little decorative tabs then i used the finger brake to bend those at 90 degrees and then i welded those around each leg so that way it would minimize any shifting that the stove could do during transport so with that all done, the next thing I just needed to do was paint it. I just wiped everything down with acetone to get any oils and residue off of the metal. And then I painted everything with a high temp barbecue paint. Now for those wondering, it says right on the can, do not use primers. I painted directly onto the metal with the barbecue paint. And I'm really pretty happy with the way it came out with the color because the wood stove color and the rest of the box they all seem to match pretty well so it all looks like one cohesive unit while i was waiting for the paint to dry i took the stove out to the little yard area that i have out in front of the shop and i lit a fire inside there is just a lot of residue that is on the stove when they first manufacture it so you want all of that to burn off outside not inside your space where you're going to put the stove so i'm extremely happy with the way everything came together uh, I like the way it all works out for me when I'm traveling. All the flue parts that you see outside pack away very neatly behind the stove. And when I get to location, everything goes together pretty quickly. I have the stovepipe coming out the rear. You have the option of coming out the top or the back. I wanted to come out the back because I wanted to leave all this open for cooking. And I've done some cooking on here. I've done biscuits. And I also have found I like to use this for just leaving food to stay warm when I'm cooking other things. It's been super handy. So the flue goes out and then there's a bracket that holds the outside pieces to the window piece. So that way everything stays secure outside. It's pretty easy to put together and pretty easy to take down. So it doesn't take too much when I get on site and it doesn't take too much when I'm ready to leave to pack it away. All of that came out really well. But I have had a few issues with the stove mainly with my flue design. Because there is so many bends, it goes out the back and then it has to go 90 degrees up and then it's a 90 degree out and then a 90 degree back up again. That's a lot of drag and it affects 
the overall draft of the stove. For the most part, it works fine. It's only when I turn my cooking fan on. If I'm trying to cook on the cooktop, I have a little exhaust fan to try to get out the cooking smells. Once that fan is trying to blow out any cooking smells, it affects the draft on this. And what ends up happening is smoke just comes piling into the van. I figured out a way to solve that problem because Tiny Wood Stoves has an optional component. It's a direct air intake and it bolts onto the bottom of the stove. So instead of the stove pulling its air for its draft in the cabin, it will pull the air for its draft outside the vehicle. You just put a piece of ducting and then that ducting goes out to the outside. Basically all your air is coming from outside and you don't have, it's not pulling in any air from the inside. Once I did that, that solved that issue. I could turn on the exhaust fan, no problem. So in my opinion, the direct air inbox is a, not an optional component. It's something that if you're thinking about getting one of these stoves, you definitely should just get that, especially if you're gonna be using the stove in a very small space. So another minor issue, the first time I went out and used the stove, it was a very windy, gusty day. And I originally had their less expensive flue cap on my, on my flue. And what would happen is wind would actually blow down the flue and you get little puffs of smoke out of the stove. So I went on their website and I upgraded that. They have a, another flue cap that has the, the one I have now that has a ring around it, which kind of blocks the wind from being able to blow directly down the flue pipe. As of right now, I haven't been out again with it being windy, so I don't know how well it's working. I'm hoping that that will resolve that issue. So the last issue I had with the stove is again with the draft. The stove comes with this baffle that goes inside and it is designed to keep the flames from going straight up your chimney and getting your chimney too hot or creating a chimney fire. And the way it should work is the flame should come up, hit this baffle, then have to go around and then up. The problem is with the stove, the way I've got it with the pipe coming out the back is the smoke would come up, have to go over, and then it would have to go down again and then out. The problem I was having is I could never get the flue temperature up to a point where it would be optimal for drafting. So I took mine out and I found that with mine out, it actually works much better. My flue temperature stays closer to the normal. Like actually right now, it's a little bit below normal still. And that's just because my fire's down a little bit. But even when I've got this thing blazing, I can only get it up a little over uh, mid normal. I feel like it's working out perfectly. And because of the fact that since I'm coming out the back, the flames have to come up and then they got to go horizontally and then up. That's working kind of as a baffle in its own right. If you guys try this stove and you decide you want to use the rear exit like I'm using, try it with and without the baffle and see if you have uh, better luck without the baffle if you're having problems with your draft. All right, so let's get into why I want a wood stove. Now, I've actually talked about this several times on the channel before. But since this video is directly about the wood stove and its insulation, we'll go ahead and cover it one more time. Now, last winter, I decided to put a high top on my van. I was a tin top before, and then I decided I put the high top. Putting the high top on, I knew I was gonna add more volume to the overall size of the van. And I'm currently using a Propex heater in here right now. During the coldest parts of winter, I was going through lots of propane even with the tin top on the van. So I knew once I added more volume to the overall size, I was gonna go through even more propane in those weeks where we have extreme cold. And when I'm saying extreme cold, we'll have weeks where it never gets above freezing. On those weeks, I was going through about a tank of propane every three to four days, which means a lot of trips to town. I decided that when I wanted to do the high top that I also wanted to put a wood stove in for the coldest parts of winter so that that way I could supplement my Propex heater. I'm still gonna keep it in here, but supplement it and be able to use the wood stove during those times so that that way the Propex wouldn't be using so much propane. The nice thing about using the two together is at night, I can load this thing up and it'll keep the van nice and warm for a long time into the evening. But once it does cool off, the Propex just takes over. So I still wake up to a nice warm van in the morning. The second reason I wanted to put the wood stove in the van is because of COVID. 
propane isn't something you can pump yourself. So if I needed to be able to come into town and get propane, it was a little bit of a challenge for me to do so. Having the wood stove would allow me to just stay out and away and be able to keep myself warm. Even if I was to run completely out of propane, I could cook and keep myself warm with the wood stove and not have to worry about getting cold inside the van. Having it as kind of an emergency preparedness item was part of my decision making. All right, folks, well, I think that wraps up everything about my build on my wood stove. If you have any more comments or questions or concerns about the build of my wood stove, please leave those down below. I do intend to do a future review on how the stove has worked out more long-term. And if you guys leave comments down below, I'll address those during that review. For everyone else, I wanna thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like. If you have any other comments or questions, leave those down below as well. And we'll catch you guys again outside.